This is uh, an ETF I think a lot of people have heard about, the first vegan ETF. And you said it, it's animal cruelty, but also environment. So it's uh, not totally just about animals, but it does screen for animal testing, animal products, but also things like military and fossil fuels, right? So here it is. Um, it's very small still, very new. 60 basis points is the fee, which I think we're going to dive in a little bit in the segment. Um, and let's look at the holdings. I think that's what's important here. Now, I kind of was expecting to see Beyond Meat right at the top. It's not. It's more of an exclusionary where they go and they look at 500 stocks, the largest 500, and they pick out stocks that don't meet the criteria. So what you're left with, though, are some big blue chip stocks. So it looks a bit like the S&P. Um, let's look real quick at the biggest excluded sectors. That's the, the big deal here. You are going to be underweight healthcare and underweight staples and overweight tech. So, Scarlett, the question here is, is this going to be something you add a little bit to or to replace your whole equity slug? And that's going to be the challenge for this fund. Right. How do you position it in your portfolio? Still with me right now is Claire Smith, CEO of Beyond Investing. Claire, before we get to that question, I noticed, as Eric showed us, that healthcare has the biggest ex exclusion. Is that because of animal testing? Yes. Yes, it would be because of animal testing, exactly. Okay, makes sense. And in terms of some of the exclusions, I know that Eric was digging through the names, and Eric, there are names like Disney and Berkshire that were not included. Walmart. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the list kind of goes on here. Yeah, I mean, Disney in particular, I think people think of Bambi and, like, animal lovers, uh, but that's out, right? And then you've got Amazon out, you've got Berkshire out. Um, what are some of the reasons? Like, let's go over Disney and Berkshire. Why are they not in it? Or in Netflix? Okay, um, Disney, uh, in addition to the same reason as Netflix in, in some senses, which is that they are commissioning films which would be using animals and actors, which is exploiting animals in, in, in some sense, obviously not as bad as raising them and, and killing them, but, uh, but still exploiting animals. Um, but in addition to that, Disney has captive animals in its uh, wild animal kingdom, so effectively that's a zoo. Um, and and we, would, we would take the position that animals should be uh, out in the wild. With respect to um, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, you mentioned that. They have Dairy Queen as a big brand and also a uh, shoe, shoe store, a uh, shoe manufacturing company. That uses um, leather. Which obviously is, is using leather. So it's everything throughout the entire supply chain of, uh, of animal products that we are, we are excluding. Now, in the vegan prospectus, you say that for every $1,000 invested, 13 animals will be saved. How did you get to that number? How did you calculate that? Yes, I think we, we, we suggested in our fact sheet that they, they would be spared. Essentially, what we did was we looked at the amount of animals that are, are killed around the world, the vast majority being um, within the, the area of, of meat, fish, um, dairy, uh, all of the food items. The animal testing is a much smaller amount, uh, so it adds a little bit to that. But we essentially divided that number by, our, by the market cap of our exclusions. So essentially, the, the, those companies that we're excluding are responsible for those animals being killed. And so it's a direct uh, relationship between the two. Now, we met, we sparred a little bit on Twitter. I think one of my questions about this product is I'm expecting to see it be like a plant-based economy theme ETF that goes hardcore towards smaller stocks that do this thing. Beyond meat, for instance. Right. And you just allocate 2% to it. You're basically trying to replace somebody's core equity position. That's a tough to dislodge Vanguard, especially at 60 basis points. What was the logic behind that decision to design it this way? Okay, so um, I mean, I'm an impact in investor my, myself, and so I'm always looking for where the biggest impact uh, can be made. Um, and uh, people's default is the S&P 500. They uh, put the majority, especially in the U.S., they'll put the majority of their equity holdings into the S&P 500. We know that there's some 9.9 .9 trillion dollars that are benchmarked to the S&P 500. How many vegans are there in the world? As a percentage of the population, it's it's going up one, two, three, four, five percent maybe. There was a recent study which suggested six percent of people self-identified as vegan. That six percent of that 9.9 .9 trillion that really should be um, thinking about these uh, these types of exclusions and imposing them across their portfolio. So we're giving them a, a ready-made package. We're doing all the hard work, going through the index, cutting out all the things that they, they should p potentially disagree with. And that, we think, is going to have a big impact. Okay, so very quickly, um, you are animal cruelty-free, you're environmentally conscious. What's your next fund going to be? If you've already kind of done the same thing for the S&P 500, what's your next act? 
oh, we, we have lots of ideas. We can certainly do the same thing in different regions. We've already done Europe. Mm -hmm. we're, we're doing global now, and, uh, and we may well have a partner for, for that in terms of a launch. Um, and just coming back to, uh, to Eric's point, we, we have looked at a global vegan thematic basket, but we don't think at this point it can be created as an ETF because those stocks are too small. They have far too low liquidity. Ah. Um, but we are looking to create it as a different, much lower, lower cost, uh, administrative cost um, offshore product um, right. initially.